according to the circuit law. Can anyone see what is the ampere circuit law? We already know that. Suppose uh, we have a current carrying wire and uh, current flowing through the wire is like I. If you want to find magnetic field at a distance R, at a distance R, say you want to find magnetic field here at a point P, at a distance R from the wire. So to find the magnetic field, we consider the ampere, consider ampere circuit, ampere loop. And over which we can apply ampere circuit law, which says that V dot DL is equal to. I'm not going in detail, we will directly use the application and solve question. So it says V dot DL is equal to mu naught I enclosed, right? This is ampere circuit. So when you use that, you write it like V into 2 pi R is equal to mu naught I, and from here. We can calculate magnetic field due to a current carrying wire is mu naught i by two pi. This we so this is nothing. This is just a method like Gauss law, like we use Gauss to find electric field. Similar in the case for magnetic field. So, so this is just this is just another method to find magnetic field in symmetric cases. We already from Biosavatla we can also find the same result. So, but using ampere circuit circuit law, it becomes sometimes easier to find magnetic field due to some symmetric configurations. So we apply that. So I think all of you are aware of that magnetic field due to current carrying wire is mu not i by two pi r, right? Also, um, Mamuna. Also, both of you know, right? Magnetic field due to current carrying wire is mu naught i by 2 pi r. So, similarly, if you have a, this is a thin wire, right? Now, suppose you have a thick wire. The main application lies here. Suppose you have a thick wire, current carrying wire. So, in that case, suppose it is cylindrical wire and you want to find magnetic field due to this configuration. So this is thick wire, right? Suppose this is a thick wire. So if we want to find magnetic field, suppose current through the this is thick wire. We have found magnetic field may not i by 2 pi r that is due to thin wire thin wire now suppose this is a long thick wire and you want to find magnetic field suppose there is a central line and we want to find magnetic field at different points due to this current carrying wire. Suppose the point can be inside also and the point can be outside also, right? Suppose this radius is capital R. So for inside, for inside, if point lies inside the wire, the magnetic field comes as by using a pair circuit law, we can find it that the magnetic field will be mu naught i by uh, 2 pi r into
value comes like this mu not i by we can also calculate mu not i by 2 pi r then it comes like uh, mu not i by 2 pi r square into r it comes like this the magnetic field due to we can check that also mu not i by 2 pi r is square into so it comes like that so actually b becomes proportional to r let me check we can do it like this b is 2 pi r is equal to mu not i by pi r square into pi r square yes so the expression is correct right so inside the wire the magnetic field becomes proportional to r if you see inside a thick wire the magnetic field becomes proportional to r right and if you see for outside point p if you want to find magnetic field here this is for inside and for outside it remains same mu not i by 2 pi r mu not i by 2 pi r so for inside basically r is less than r and for outside for outside point r is greater than r and magnetic field is this all of you understood this i think you already know this formula if you don't know you can understand it so all of you understood it i am not going to derive it we will directly is use this in uh, solving numerical so when the wire is thick inside the wire magnetic field is directly proportional to distance we don't think that we know that in a conductor electric field is zero but in case of current carrying conductor magnetic field is not zero in case of thick wire it is directly proportional to r inside the wire and outside the wire the magnetic field is inversely proportional to r all of you understood this anyone having doubt please ask i have written directly result from ampere circuit law no need to derive it right so all of you understood it what i am trying to say yes if we draw the graph if we draw the graph of magnetic field versus distance so we will get it like that if you draw the graph b versus r if we draw a graph of b versus b versus r then we will get graph like that If you draw a graph of B versus R, you will get graph like this. For inside the wire, we know that B is proportional to R, and for outside wire, we know that B is inversely proportional. So this is very important. Generally asked in NEET, so this is very important. Now let us see one question. All of you understood the graph? How I have drawn the graph? of magnetic field versus distance due to a thick wire this is due to a thick wire for thin wire how will be the graph there is no magnetic field for thin wire p is inversely proportional to right so the graph will be like that only this portion 
This is for thin wire. And if wire is hollow, if wire is hollow for hollow cylinder, or you can say hollow wire, hollow cylindrical wire. The graph will be like that. Inside the wire, hollow cylindrical wire means the wire is like this. It is hollow from inside. So in that case, there is no magnetic field inside and outside it is one by one. So we will get graph like this. All of you understood this? So based on that, let us do some questions. So all of you understood how I have drawn the graph and how, how I have written the expression for magnetic field. All of you understood it? So anyone having any doubt, please ask in the graph. I have drawn this graph. All of you understood it? Anyone having mm -hmm. doubt, please ask. Okay, so let us do one question based on that. It's a neat question. Do the question number 30. All of you attempt question number 30 and all of you tell me your answers. Attempt question number 30. Can all of you see the question? It's a neat 2019 question. Let me put it in. Now all of you can see it clearly. So all of you attempt this question. It's a neat 2019 question. We are all are preparing for neat, right? Anyone for J? Hanifa, Kulsu, Maimuna, all of all three of you are preparing for NEET, right? Yes, sir. So this is NEET 2019 question recently asked. And tell me. Each of you tell your answer individually. Welcome God C.
तो इस इज अ सिलेंड्रिकल कंडक्टर ऑफ रेडियस आर इज कैरिंग ए कांस्टेंट करंट ए प्लॉट ऑफ द मैग्नेटिक ऑफ द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड विद डिस्टेंस d फ्रॉम द सेंटर ऑफ द कंडक्टर इज करेक्टली रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय द फिगर तो एक्चुअली इट्स लिटिल विद कॉन्ट्राडिक्ट्री क्वेश्चन दे शुड हैव क्लियरली मेंशन इज इट दे आर सेइंग ओनली सिलेंड्रिकल कंडक्टर इज इट सॉलिड और हॉलो दे हैव नॉट मेंशन इज इट सॉलिड और हॉलो इफ नथिंग इज मेंशन then we should take cylindrical conductor means like this hollow a cylindrical conductor of radius r is carrying a constant current so the in this question they should have mentioned it clearly right whether it is hollow or solid if it is hollow then the answer could be this also If the cylindrical conductor is hollow, then answer could be like this. And if it is solid, then answer will be like this. Getting my point? So they should have mentioned it clearly. Otherwise, we may take it as hollow or solid cylindrical conductor. So not much clear in the question. They should have mentioned it. Is it a hollow cylindrical conductor or solid cylindrical conductor? Generally, we take solid cylindrical if they don't mention, and they are saying a cylindrical conductor of radius r. So we may more chances is that we can consider it as a solid, and then in that case, answer will be C. But here they should have mentioned it, so so the possibility is both. For B and C, right? Getting my point, all of you. So they should have mentioned it clearly. Otherwise, if not mentioned, we can take it solid, and maybe the answer can be C. Also, getting my point, what I'm trying to say. all of you understood this Sorry, your mic is muted. Oh, sorry. So why don't all of you have message, message or told me earlier? Is it muted now or it's muted from beginning? No, oh, it was just muted for some while, I guess. It's muted. So. Have you understood? In the last question, I I was saying that they should have mentioned that the cylinder is all or solid. If it is solid, then answer could be C. But if it is hollow, answer could be B also. But they have not mentioned, so we can take it as solid. Getting my point? So the answer. Could be both B and C, but most appropriate in such cases we can take it as C, 
since a conductor means generally we will take like a wire kind of thing current carrying wire which is solid so we can take it solid but they should have mentioned it getting my point now all of you attend this question number 33 this is need 2016 question based on ampere circuit and law so all of you try this quickly all of you solve this question number 33 Anyone got any answer? So let us understood the question. Let us understand the question first. It says a long straight wire of radius A carries a speedy current I. So suppose uh, we have a conducting wire like this. It's a thick wire and the current through the wire is I. The current is strongly distributed over its cross section. Now we have to find the ratio of magnetic field B and B dash at radial distance A by 2 and A to it, right? So we have to find ratio of magnetic field at A by 2, which is given as b and then 2a which is b dash so we have to find ratio of b and b dash so for b for v we know that suppose uh, we can take it like this is point 0.1 and this is point 0.2 so for point 0.1 it is internal point right so for internal point we know that magnetic field is directly proportional to distance it means b1 will be directly proportional to a by 2 and we know that for outside point b is inversely proportional to r it means b2 will be inversely proportional to 1 by 2 right this all of you understood how b1 is proportional to a by 2 and how b2 is proportional to 1 by 2a all of you understood this?
Okay, now we can take the ratio. B1 upon B2 will be equal to A by 2 divided by 1 by divided by ratio magnetic field at B and B dash at radial distance A by 2 and B from the axis of the cylinder is So B1 is proportional to uh, A by 2 and B2 is proportional to 1 by 2A. So B1 by B2 we will get one by two A, so we will get it as uh, it should have cancelled out. So two A square upon two two A square by two, right? Is long straight wire of okay, this difference is only distributed over its cross section. The ratio of magnetic field B and B dash at radial distance. A by 2 and 2A respectively from the axis of the wire is. B1 is proportional to A by 2 and B2 is proportional to 1 by 2A. So B1 by B2 will be A by 2 and 1 by 2A. So it will be A square. I think options are not correct. Maybe something they have missed out. It should be A square. A is given on the option. A is given in the option. So the correct answer should be A square. The option, I think, they have given different option. It should be A square. Let me check from different book also.
okay the radius is different we have to use the exact formula here let me check we have to use the exact formula we cannot use direct that formula right we have to use exact formula of magnetic field like <clears throat> what was the exact expression of magnetic field for r less than a what was magnetic field formula b is equal to mu not i by 2 pi a square into r right so here we will put for r equal to a by 2 for r equal to a by 2 we can find the magnetic field what is magnetic field given in the question for b dash right so b dash will be for r equal to a by 2 we can get b dash b dash will be mu not i by 2 pi a square into a by 2 right so a and a will be cancelled out and we will get mu not i by Four, we are not I by four pi a, right? We will get it as b dash. Similarly, for similarly for r greater than a, what was the formula? B is equal to we are not I by two pi r. So we can write it as b equal to we are not I by two pi into 2a r is given as 2a in the question and it is given that b dash so in the question it is given first magnetic field is given as b it is given as b and the second magnetic field is given as b dash so we have to find ratio of b and b dash So what will be the ratio B and D B dash? B and B dash will come out to be B not and B not will be cancel out. It will come out to be one is to one. All of you understood it. So we cannot take directly inversely proportional since there is also expression of A in the denominator, right? So here we cannot take A as constant. since radius is also given in terms of distance is also given in terms of a so we cannot take this directly here since in numerator and denominator we also have the term a right so it's better to use the exact expression for magnetic field this one and the last this expression we can find the ratio all of you understood it anyone having doubt please ask So the correct answer is C. So we cannot here directly use B proportional to R or inversely proportional to R. This the reason behind that is R is given in terms of A. So we I we cannot take A as constant here. Getting my point? So all of you have to use exact expression of magnetic field, not inversely proportional or directly proportional. Anyone having any doubt? Please ask. All of you understood, Anifa, Mamuna. Anyone having any doubt? Please ask. All of you understood this. How we got one is to one, the ratio of magnetic field at a by two and a. Okay, so this was all about Ampere circuit and law. Now uh, we also know that from Ampere circuit and law we have two configuration, which is called solenoid and toroid, right? So we also know 
there are two configurations uh, which uses the application of ampere circuit alloys solenoid and toroid so solenoid and toroid toroid so we know that what is the magnetic field due to a solenoid b is equal to mu not ni and for toroid we know that magnetic field is mu not this is also same mu not ni but here what we take n n is n upon 2 pi r the difference is that so we can see directly b is proportional to current i and here also you can say b is directly proportional to current i so inside a solenoid magnetic field is directly proportional to current and we already know the formula b is equal to mu not n i where i is the current in the conductor and l is number of turns per unit length so all of you know this formula right magnetic field due to a solenoid mu not i for toroid or solenoid both have magnetic field mu not i in case of toroid n is equal to capital n by 2 pi r here r is the radius of the toroid and capital n is the number of turns or number of uh so all of you know this formula let us do a question based on ampere circuit law now this is the question number 43 this is also neat question so all of you attempt question number 43 this is a solenoid question all of you attempt question number 43 very important and easy question based on solenoid it's neat 2003 question so both of you attempt this question question number 43 anifa memona both of you attempt this question okay sir This is a neat 2003 question. So I'm gonna go to option C. What's your answer, Anifa? What's your answer? Hmm. 
you also got C. So let us see what it says a long solenoid is carrying a current produces a magnetic field B along its axis. If the current is double and number of turn is per centimeter is half. So we know that B is equal to mu naught n i and what happens B dash says the current is double and number of turn is half. So mu naught n becomes n by 2 and i becomes 2i. So what will happen? Again it will be mu naught i so B dash will be equal to B. Getting so correct answer is C. All right. So this was question based on solenoid. Let us do one more question based on toroid, and then we will move to the next part. Okay, for Toro ad, I will give you the question in the assignment, or you can have this question number this one 31. So, let me give you the question number 31. This question is based on Toro ad. So, all of you attempt question number 31. Both of you attempt this question. This is NEET 2019 question. So not much older, just two years old. So both of you attempt this. When you forgot D, what your answer, Mamuna? Sure, one second. Sure, option D. You also got option D. Let me try. So it says two toroids, one and two have total number of turns, 200 and so like N1 is equal to 200 and N2 is equal to 200. N2 is equal to 100. Radius is also given, R1 is given as 40 centimeter and R2 is given as 20 centimeter. If they carry same current, then the 
ratio magnetic field along the two loops so we have to find v1 by v2 what is the v1 by v2 a small the ratio is v0 and v1 current is same by v0 and to i so it will be n1 by n2 right and what you did here is you put n1 equal to 200 and n2 equal to 100 so you got 2 is to 1 right but do you think it it's correct it's actually wrong you cannot put put n1 equal to 2 and it is a case of toroid right so what is the value of n1 n1 is equal to n1 upon 2 pi r1 toroid not solenoid so what is n2 n2 is capital n2 by 2 pi r2 you also have to see radius getting my point yes so what will be that <coughs> the answer will be like this capital n1 upon constant will be cancel out so it will be capital n1 upon r1 and r2 by n2 capital n2 so you will get it as 200 by 40 into r2 20 by n2 100 so we will get it as 1 is to 1 right will get it as 1 is to 1 400 <clears throat> 4000 upon 4000 so will correct answer as 1 is to 1 understood or both of you this is need 2019 question so it's generally given to confuse the student and they in hurry they will write most of the student write n1 by n2 200 by 1 and they they will see the option d and they will mark it as d but it is not correct both of you understood where you have done the mistake yes okay so this is how we should go for question based on solenoid and toroid now the next concept is we have some idea of uh i'm not going to do the question force between parallel current carrying wire this is already you know v not i1 i2 by 2 pi a1 d2 and uh, sometimes also uh, you know force on a current carrying wire which we have already studied right force on the current carrying wire we know that so the next very important topic is galvanometer galvanometer this is the last topic of this galvanometer what is that i am not going to discuss construction and working and all that i will explain you the formula which will be used to solve the questions so basically what happens a galvanometer is kind of instrument which is you know there are some calibrations like there is some uh, they have calibrations there are some calibration in this instrument and there is some pointer so this basically this pointer deflects so what happens is deflection there is some kind of you know uh, suppose the deflection is theta so what happens this k theta becomes equal to torque acting on the suppose it is connected to a loop some kind of loop having area a and current carrying carrying current i and magnetic field is b there are some arrangement so that we put the magnetic field also which you have studied in 
class 12 rating. So what we do is from we generally use this expression NIAB AB is equal to K theta where theta is the deflection. So from here you can calculate all the things based on construction and working from here we define two things current sensitivity is which is given by theta by i here what is the theta theta is the deflection theta is deflection basically deflection so we define current sensitivity which is given by Deflection upon applied current, or you can also say current sensitivity is inversely proportional to current. Also, we define so from here what you can also write theta by i will be equal to here. From here, you can also write theta by i is equal to n a p upon k. Here, k is a constant basically, know that k is a constant, basically, it is a torsional constant. So directly you can remember k is a constant. We also define second term which is voltage sensitivity and which is given by theta by v. So you can also write it v is equal to ir. So this becomes current sensitivity by r. It means n a v by r. So you can remember like this. So the main thing you have to remember is current sensitivity is inversely proportional to current and voltage sensitivity is inversely proportional to voltage. So all of you understood this, you might have you might have uh, uh, you know taught in the in your class 12 class the formula basic formula for current sensitivity and voltage sensitivity. So we will directly do the questions based on current sensitivity and voltage sensitivity. I have given you the basic idea that current sensitivity is inversely proportional to current and voltage sensitivity is inversely proportional to voltage. This will be sufficient to solve most of the question. No need to go in much detail the formula, but it's very easy, not difficult formula. You can find by this also. Here I have given the formula for that. Like you can find current sensitivity like this and voltage sensitivity like this. So all of you understood this one how i have calculated voltage sensitivity and current sensitivity and what is its importance yes. both of you okay so based on that we will do some questions directly so that we can uh, understood the concept clearly then we will move to the conversion of voltmeter into galvanometer and ammeter so Remaining questions, which is based on ampere circuit, I will give you the assignment. So let us uh, move to the galvanometer and voltage meter question. So let us do this first question. Uh, question number 75. This question has been asked in NEET 2018. I'm dropping for you. Both of you attempt question number 75. Very important. And need 2018 question. Both of you try this question.
both of you trying this question yes Sir, is it option E? You got option E. Let me check. So the question says a current sense current sensitivity of a moving coil galvanometer is so I S is given as five division per milliampere, and its voltage sensitivity also given. What is voltage sensitivity? It is twenty division per volt. Okay. The distance of the gallery. So we have seen the formula voltage sensitivity is current sensitivity upon resistance right voltage sensitivity is current sensitivity upon resistance so we know that vs is equal to is upon r right it's not like v is equal to ir it's different so v is voltage sensitivity is current sensitivity upon resistance so from here we can find r is equal to i s upon v s so we will get it as r is equal to what is i s 5 division per milliampere so 5 upon 10 to the power minus 3 we have to put that and it's 20 so we will get it as 100 sorry Five upon twenty into one thousand. So we will get five hundred upon two. So we will get it as two fifty ohm. Understood? We are getting two fifty. I think you have not taken ten to the power minus three, right? Yes. Uh, yes. We have to take that. Then anyhow, if you have not taken 10 from minus 3 also, you should have got like 2.5 or something. How you got 40? Have you divided 20 upon 5? Sir, R is equals to I by V or it should be V by I? That, that I was trying to say, it's not Ohm's law, like, it's not like Ohm's law V is equal to IR. Current sensitivity and voltage sensitivity is different. It's not current or voltage. Okay. Getting my point? If you see yeah. here. What we got? Vs is equal to Is by R, right? What we got? Vs is equal to Is by R. So not confuse it with the voltage current relation in Ohm's law. That is different. Here we have voltage sensitivity and current sensitivity. So we have relation between that. It's not voltage and current, right? It's yes. inverse relation. We know that current sensitivity is inversely proportional to current. And voltage sensitivity is inversely proportional to voltage. So here you are getting a reverse relation. Getting my point? 
you will get reverse relation actually we got we know v is equal to ir but here you are getting v is equal to i by r this is because current sensitivity is inversely proportional to current and voltage sensitivity is inversely proportional to uh, voltage that is why you are getting a reverse relation so don't mix it with the voltage and current getting yes so this is how we should solve question based on voltage and current sensitivity now very important topic most important topic of this chapter is conversion that is very important so conversion conversion so voltmeter we can have two types of conversions right we have the galvanometer so what happens is the galvanometer i can write conversion of a galvanometer conversion of a galvanometer so galvanometer can be converted into ammeter and galvanometer can be converted into voltmeter both possibly both possibilities are there so when we convert a galvanometer into ammeter what we do is do you know do you have some idea what we do when we convert galvanometer into ammeter what we do any idea um, we add shunt resistor resistor correct what we do is we add a shunt resistor so suppose this the shunt resistance is s and the so we do that and generally what happens suppose the current is i total current is i so current through galvanometer is always ig so from here what we will get the current i minus i so these are in shunt is always parallel and this is a small resistance so from here what you can write i minus ig into s equal to ig into e. so this is the basic relation from here we can find anything if s is given ig is given or capital i is given so we have four parameters capital g s ig and capital i so generally in the question three of these parameter will be given and fourth one you have to calculate so if you know this relation you can easily find the remaining what my point yes similarly when we converting a galvanometer into a voltmeter it's it's more easy than to convert in ammeter so what we do is suppose you have a galvanometer and here what is g capital g is, is capital g indicates resistance of the galvanometer right so to convert a galvanometer in voltmeter what we do we add a resistor in series right what we do we add a resistor in series high resistance we add a high resistance in series so the net voltmeter v can be calculated here so what will be the value of v from here you can collect v is equal to suppose this current is ig going through the galvanometer so net voltage can be calculated ig into r plus v ig into r plus v and generally r is very high this resistance is taken as high range so to convert a galvanometer into ammeter we are shunting it through a small resistor and to convert galvanometer into voltmeter we are putting a high resistance in series understood yes now let us do the questions for more clarity so come to the questions quickly
to solve question number 77. Why I am giving you like this. This is need 2014 question and good question to solve this. All these questions. This is based on conversion of a galvanometer into ammeter. Are you trying it? Yes, so one second. Sir, is it option B? What option B? Let me check. So the question says, in an ammeter, in an ammeter of 0.2% of main current passes through galvanometer. So how we convert a galvanometer to an ammeter? We shunt it. So we shunt it like this. Suppose this is S. And it says, suppose the uh, main current is capital I. So it says that 25% of main current passes through the current. What does it mean? Suppose this current is IG. According to the question, IG is 0.2% of I, right? It means I into 2 divided by 10 into 100. That means 2i by 1000. Ig is that. If the resistance of the galvanometer is G, then resistance of the ammeter. So we have to find total resistance of the ammeter, right? So what is the total resistance of the ammeter? Actually, it is a parallel combination of G and S. So, the resistance of the ammeter will be, so, so what is the resistance of the ammeter? That is Gs upon G plus S, right? R1, R2, by these are in parallel. So, We don't know S. G is given, we don't know S. 
so how to find s what we can do is we can apply one concept also we can put it like this i g into g equal to i minus i g into s right so we can put the value of i g i g is 2 i e by 1000 that will be equal to i minus i g so i minus 2 i by 1000 into s so from here we can get the value some value from here you can find unknown s so thousand we can take common so i will let 2g by 1000 i will be cancelled out i will get 1 minus 2 by 1000 into s so from here we can get s what is s s will be equal to Thousand thousand will be cancelled out. So S will be two into two by nine ninety eight. Nine ninety eight, right? So S will be nine ninety eight G. So now I can put here put the value of G into what is S? S we got, or we can put it like G by 499, right? G by 499. So I will put S equal to G by 499. So I can get it here or also. So G into G by 499 divided by G plus G by 499. So 4949 will be cancelled out. So I will get it as G upon 500, right? So the correct answer is C. Understood? Yes. This question seems to be easy, but not so easy. What mistake you have done? I messed up uh, from like 2 IG by that from there I messed up. Okay. So I think you have written GS upon G plus S and then if we don't know S right. So we have to calculate S like this then and then we can get the answer. All right. Let us do one more question quickly. So that we can finish off this chapter. <clears throat> we have seen the conversion of a galvanometer into a meter. Let us do one question based on conversion of a galvanometer into volt meter. So do this question number 80, 80. This question is need 2010 question. I will drop it for you. Try question number 80.
Are you trying it? Yes. So here we have to convert a galvanometer into voltmeter. So not much time left. So let me do it for you. So what it says: a galvanometer has a coil of resistance. So G is given. Suppose this is the G, and gives a full full scale deflection of for 30 milliampere current. It is to work as a voltmeter of 30 volt. So the resistance required to so so we have to convert it into a voltmeter. Let the series resistance is R. So and in the question the total voltage is given. According to question, let us suppose this is voltage V, and this is given as we have to convert into it into voltmeter or like 30 volt, and also uh, IG is given. According to the question, the full scale deflection current is 30 milliampere. So now it's our job is EG. What we can do? V is equal to ig into r plus g so from here we can calculate v is given as 30 volt and ig is given 30 into 10 to the power minus 3 and r we have to calculate and g is given as 100 so from here we can get this 1000 equal to r plus 100 so R will be equal to 900. Understood it? That will be 900. Got it? Yes. So this is how we should do questions based on sensitivity, uh, sorry, conversion of Galvanometer into voltmeter and ammeter. Let me just show you any theoretical question. Now solve quickly question number 88. This is theoretical question. So solve it. Question number 88. Right here only. To convert a galvanometer into ammeter, one needs to connect. What should yeah, be the answer? Low resistance in parallel. Correct. It should be a low resistance in parallel. Right. Now solve question number 84. Solve the theoretical question. Key question number 84. High resistance in uh, in series with its coil. Yes, it should be high resistance in in series with its coil. A galvanometer acting as a voltmeter will have a high resistance in series with correct. So the correct answer is C. All right. So this was all about today's class. We have seen the conversion of the voltmeter. Uh, what we have seen today, we have seen some applications of ampere law. Then we did. Uh, galvanometer, we have seen voltage sensitivity, current sensitivity, and then we have seen conversion. And initially, we have the 